music method. Come on in, y'all. A great pleasure to see you here. Today we have a song by the Wood Brothers called Postcards from Hell. I had many friends back in my college days who loved this band, and um, I dabbled in listening with them, and I always kind of enjoyed them, never fell in love, but can't say I really deeply explored them. But I do remember this song. This song popped up in my feed, and I was just like, oh yeah, I remember this record. And I sat down to learn a bit of it because it's very cool finger picking. Watch a live version where they're live on some outdoor stage. It'll pop up if you search it. And it's, it's the playing is so cool to see them do it on that electric guitar. There's a little grit. If you don't know the song, obviously go listen to it. Really cool finger picking. Not your conventional Travis. It's a little more hybrid. He's got some upstrums in there with the index finger that make it really cool. Not a beginner piece. So again, always check out my Travis Picking playlist. Start there. This one is not easy to play correctly. If you want to wing it, then it is. The chord shapes are easy and you can always do like a simple little pattern. But to get it exact, there's some really cool stuff going on. So let's do it. I'm going to take you guys through it nice and slow with the tabs up on the screen. And we're going to learn Postcards from Hell by the Wood Brothers. Oh yeah. Two quick little notes. One is Rhino. Thank you so much. Unbelievable donor to Mike's Music Method. You guys would not even believe me if I told you what he gifted and donated to Mike's Music Method to make these videos better, to have me bring you guys 4K videos and just <laughs> the gear. Just a lot of gear, let's put it that way. So thank you so much to my dear friend Rhino. I love you and thank you. And the second thing is, let me know at the end of the video on the slow run through, I did a little bit of scrolling tab. And you guys saw at the beginning, sorry, I have an unbelievable head cold. Um, but let me know if that's helpful. It is time consuming, but if it's helpful and enough people request it, I will do it. I'm sure I can figure out a way to get better at the workflow. Let me know if that's helpful. If not, if just having the tab is the same, then that's way easier for me. But if for some reason seeing the tab flow uh, with the little marker is that much makes it easier to learn, let me know. If not, then I won't do it and I'll just put the normal tab down there. All right, let's do it. Whew. Measure one. We got our capo way up on seven. So make sure it's in the right spot, adjust it, get it good, retune your guitar, because that's up high, it's gonna be funky. And this song is cool. Right off the bat, we already got a very weird idea that you guys probably have not come across or done yet. His thumb is playing a G chord. He's just hitting that note G there and implying it, but you'll see a G7. And his pinky's gonna stretch all the way to the, again, we have the capo on, it's confusing. It's the 13th fret. But if you look at the tab or you're thinking without the capo, it's the sixth fret. And he's going from six to five, which is really cool. And his guitar has a little bit of grit on it, a little distortion. Um, but another reason it sings out is because he's hitting two strings at once with the index finger, which is gonna be a big part of getting this song to sound accurate to how the Wood Brothers are doing it. Uh, what is that guitarist's name? I don't know, I should probably look that up. So here is the, the pattern with the right hand. We got that thumb there, and it's thumb on six, four, and. And I, my index finger is brushing up on the second string and the third string. And if you hit the fourth, that's kind of okay too. Don't worry too much about it. It's got a really loose, fun feel. So six, four, and I'm hitting two and three with the pointer. Then thumb again on six. And then I move that pinky to the ring finger, and now I'm hitting the fifth fret and strumming up. Six, four, pointer, six, and. Right on the fifth fret there. And then I'm doing thumb on the fourth, and then immediately pointer on the, just the third string there. So that's just an extra color, not really the melody. The melody is bum, bum. Again, on that last third, I suppose, again, if you hit the fourth string as well with it, okay, it's not the end of the world. And that's the first measure. Let's play it real slow. Three, four. One more time. Three, four. Whew. Measure two, we go to a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. So our thumb was there. Now we're moving that third fret down to the second. 
and I'm playing only a little bit of the D chord here. I just need uh, pointer fingers on the second fret of the G string, and then I have the third fret of the B string. But I'm not worrying about that top string right now. You don't need it. I've just got two and three there. And the measure is this. So we got a pinch at the beginning. I'm pinching six and two at the same time. There, I, I would use my, it's not, I'd use my middle finger because we're gonna have to, a lot of back and forth between the second and third string. So there, I got my middle finger on that pinch, fourth string with my thumb, and then immediately doing the third string with my pointer. So pinch six and two, then it's thumb, pointer on four, three. And then the second half of the measure is just six, two, six string, second string, back to the middle finger, thumb middle. And then it's fourth string with the thumb and then third string again, but it's open. He's moving to the next chord and he's lifting his hand there. Now don't obsess about that if you um, do this and you hit that one, it's fine. It's not the end of the world, but I'm pretty sure it's open as he's transitioning into the next chord. Measure three is an A7 chord with an E in the bass. So from the ground up, I got three, third fret, which is my G, it's a note G, makes it an A7 chord, and then just barring the twos. You can do that third fret with either your middle finger or your ring, it's up to you. That's it, A7. And here is the right hand. It's really cool. We've got thumb on six, then thumb goes to four, and then immediately the third string with my pointer finger. And then we go back to the sixth string. And here is the tricky part. I'm hitting the top two strings. Now, for me, that's easier to do with my pointer finger, but then it makes my pointer finger way busier. I'm not gonna beat you up about it. There's guys like Merle Travis who use their pointer finger for everything and a lot of other players who are more liberal with their middle finger and even the ring finger. So it's your call. There's more than one way to play it. Experiment with both. For me, it's easier to um, you know, brush up more than one string with my pointer, but the song is so quick back and forth that your pointer just might not be fast enough. You might not have that freakish alien Merle Travis uh, reaction time with that index finger. So then you just wanna get used to brushing with your middle. Right? If we've, we've all learned to do it with our pointer, then we can do it with our middle, right? Just a matter of time. So experiment with both. And here is the measure again. We have six, the, the string numbers are six, four, three, six, hit one and two. And then the thumb on four alone. So three, four. One more time. Measure four. Here we have an actual D chord fully realized with the F sharp in the bass. So same as before, but now you do need that middle finger on that high E string and all those notes. And similar, we got a cool little pull off happening here though. Uh, let me look at my tab to make sure I'm playing it right. Yeah, so we're pinching six and um, again, you, you can brush here to hit the first and second string together, or you can play them with both your pointer and your middle. There's a lot of different technique ways, ways to play this song. So again, you can pitch two and three with two different fingers, or you can just heavily brush them again. I'd lean towards the brushing with one finger, but it's your call, because that way you're gonna be a little more consistent. But then if you brush, again, it's up to you if you wanna do it with your index or your middle finger. Uh, so we have that pinch, hitting the bunch together there. And then we're doing thumb alone on four, and then immediately the third string with your pointer. So technique-wise, I'd maybe brush with the middle because then my index can do the next note. That way I'm not just totally tiring out one finger. It tends to be my methodology. So that's the first half of the measure. And then here we do that same pinch and brush, but we do it with a pull-off. We're pulling off our middle finger. And in order to get it to cut through, I talk about this a lot, you don't just wanna lift it, that's too quiet. I'm tugging towards the ground and, and then releasing, like I'm shooting a bow and arrow up into the ceiling. Um, you know, the tug isn't long and drawn out because then it would be a bend, but it's just like a quick pull down and release to get a nice loud beat out, to get that pull off to really cut through and make it sound like it's kind of been picked again, right? You want it to have some volume to it. And then we're doing thumb alone on four, 
And just like we did in the last measure, lifting the chord to get open on the third string at the end with my pointer finger. So really slow with that measure. Three, four, we got the brush. Four, three, brush again with the pull off. Then it's four, three is open. Pitch. Mike's Music Method fans and um, contributors, huge hug. Unbelievable. Your support is unbelievable. Thank you guys so much. Everyone who's been donating on Patreon and PayPal or through Venmo or whatever, giving me some of your talents by giving me cool works of art or even a super kind email. All of that stuff means so much to me. For those of you who are not contributing, I'm doing the value for value model. I have nothing behind a paywall. My promise to you is to never have anything behind a paywall. That way anyone who has access to YouTube and might not have the means can get a great finger picking guitar education. But that means I need other people supporting it so you guys can buy me some time to make more of these videos. But what's awesome about that, my promise to you to have no paywall means that every time you donate, it's like a charitable act. So when you give me a little bit of money, that's giving me time to make the video free for someone who doesn't have the money to pay for private lessons or whatever it may be. And that's it, it's a value for value model. What are these lessons worth to you every month? Maybe it's like private guitar lessons, that could be 150 bucks a month. Maybe it's 20 bucks a month, maybe you're chipping in five bucks a month. I don't know, you get to decide the value for value model. But remember, the more people are pitching in, the more time I can put into making these. I would love to tackle the entire Towns Van Zandt catalog, John Prine, Mississippi John Hurt, the sky is the limit of Mike's music method. But done ranting, I hope you guys know what I'm saying. Thank you again for everyone who's been supporting. And if you haven't su supported, please consider. Let's keep going with the song. <sighs> Measure five is nearly identical to one. The only difference is you're pinching at the beginning. And I'm pinching the third fret on the second string, third fret on the B string. So I have those two notes together. And again, that pinch, if you want, can be a little bit heavier. You can hit two and three at the same time with that brush. And we're just getting that one extra melody note. Otherwise, the measure is exactly the same as the first measure, except with that additional pinch at the beginning instead of just the thumb. <sighs> measure six is exactly the same as measure two. We're on the D chord with the F sharp in the bass. The only thing I'd kind of point out that I didn't before is you want to lift only at the very last minute. Right, you don't want to lift that too, too early. Because you want boom the first time, boom, boom. You want it to ring out as long as possible. Measure seven, back to the A chord with the E in the bass. Very simple. No, it's that simple, even easier than I thought. It's just holding down that A chord, you don't even need the A7. And the fingers are the, or the strings are six, four, three, six, two, four, six, four, three, six, two, four. Thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb. That's it, easy one. Whew. Measure eight is the same as six, which is the same as two. seen it twice that's it you guys got it Whew, and a big congratulations you have the intro down now to play it slow is not that bad but to get it real loose and fast like the woods brothers do it the wood brothers do it is not so easy and you're gonna realize like oh doing it slow is all fairly simple nothing too crazy they got all the parts down but to really get this one cooking uh, it becomes like a bit of a tongue twister on your on your fingers and the chord shapes are similar enough and so repetitive that like it'll trip you up. But go slow, keep practicing it, practicing it slow for a while and slowly build up over time. I'm, I have such a head cold today. Change the weather, spring is almost here. All right, so we're gonna do a slow run through of the entire intro. Now that you guys got it, it's gonna be easy, slow. It's very exciting. So let's do it. Three. Four.
guys, we are just going to breeze through this verse. It's pretty much a just really simplified version of that introduction. So let's talk about it. In the tab, we are at measure nine, and we have that G chord. Um, you can do your thumb here again, and then your pointer finger is on the third fret of the B string, the second string. And we're just doing this, we're doing a pinch, six, and again, I'm brushing two and three with my pointer finger there, or middle, or using pointer and middle together, all those options. But we're pinching that, and then it's four, three, six, two, four, three. That's it. Pinch, four, three, six, two, four, three. And your rhythm count is one, two, and three, and four, and grape, apple, apple, apple. And then right after that, we go to the D chord with the F sharp in the bass. Almost the same pattern, except the fourth beat doesn't have an and. So we got that same pinch at the beginning. Four, three, six, two, four. So one more time, the pinch. Four, three, six, two, four. Then we'll keep going right into the A chord with the E in the bass. That one's really sparse. It's just six, four, three, six, two, four. Six, four, three, six, two, four. So sparse on the fingers, right? And the, the rhythm's not quick. You get what I'm saying, right? It's just thumb, thumb, and thumb, and thumb, 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 thumb pointer, thumb, middle, thumb. And then we go back to the D chord with the F sharp in the bass. And the pattern here is, he's not really pinching at the beginning. I'm just hearing six alone, four, three, six, two, four. So no crazy pull offs, no extra color because he's focusing on singing, right? He's got a good um, delivery, a loose kind of lyrical delivery, kind of a lot of, uh, a lot of syllables, right? It's a quick melody. So he's keeping the guitar playing really simple. Now you may note in my tab, download, all the tabs are free, unbelievable, mikesmusicmethod.com. Nothing behind a paywall here at Mike's Music Method. So you should always be following along with the tab that you downloaded. That way you can look ahead and not just see the one bar that's posted here. So if you have, if you have your tab downloaded, you can look at measure 13. And for measure 13, I just give you four measures of the verse. And it's hard to know whether nine through 12 or 13 through 16 is what he's doing, right? He's taking some liberty. It's not like he's playing those verses exactly the same every time. So if you look at 13, it's almost identical to nine, except there's no beginning hit, right? So sometimes when he loops it, he's not doing that pinch again at the beginning. He's just doing thumb, right? Very subtle difference. And now if you look at 14 and compare it to 10, um, just adding that last and beat the third string open so I think you get the idea look at the tab and you decide how busy you want to make it one might seem too sparse one might seem too busy very subtle difference no one's gonna notice you can even pick the same pattern like one two and three and four and just treat that as the way you're gonna do the verse I think you guys get it let's move on to the the bridge or the chorus or whatever it is we're calling that part to quickly talk about vocals on the verse, I think you guys are gonna intuit how it sounds, but I'll play through it once slow, um, just the verse with the vocals. So, three, four. I know a man who sings the blues And it plays just what he feels know how to explain the timing on that one here he's a little bit high if I were gonna sing it comfortable in my register I'd lower the capo because I really kind of have to like belt that top note to get it to sound clean but that's the idea um, I'll do it one more time three four I know a man who sings the blues you have that emphasis on beat one a lot right If it's too hard to match it, what I always suggest doing is just do the chords first, right? I know a man who sings the blues. And try to get that down. Then maybe you just add your thumb. I know a man who sings the blues. <laughs> and he plays just what he feels. And then perhaps you can do a really simple pattern like one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four sing to that and build up 
Just like anything, if you want to sing while you're playing, you have to practice singing while you're playing. It's not like you can independently develop these things and then expect them to go together. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know a good metaphor, but you get what I'm saying. You, you can't practice them independently. Sure, you'll get better at each one, but it is its own skill to do them together. Like you can maybe ride a unicycle and you can maybe juggle, but if you're going to practice juggling on a unicycle, you should probably practice juggling on a unicycle. Does that one work? Yeah. Measure 17, we are onto the bridge. It's hard to call this a chorus because it happens so sparsely. The verses are so long. So I call this a bridge, call it whatever you want, but it becomes heavily palm muted and it's not that hard, let's do it. So measure 17 in the tab, we're just playing a G chord. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna palm mute it just so you guys can hear it, but know that he's really heavily palm muted on the recording. It's that G chord again with three and then three on the second string. And it's just six, four, three, six, two, four, three. Thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer. Measure 18 is exactly the, th the same. Can't stop snorting. And then F sharp major is the next measure, 19. Um, it's a bar chord, right? Bar chord on the second fret, your E shape bar chord. Second fret is F sharp major. Now I'm doing it with my, uh, it doesn't matter. You can do it with your thumb over the top or you can just do it as a full on bar chord. That's it, we have six, four, then I hit the third string, but I've actually lift my middle finger and I'm hammering on from the second fret to the third on that G string. So it's six, four, then hit that hammer on the third string. And right when you hammer, it's a compound movement. So that hammer happens at the same time as you hitting your thumb on the sixth string of the next beat. So thumb, thumb, pointer, and then you're just hammering. You're getting the sound only from the hammer on the G string, but you're also hitting the thumb on the sixth string at the same time. So go slow, rewatch that if that's new to you, but for all of you who know it, I'm not gonna belabor it. I think you guys get that. And then you immediately hit the middle finger on the second string, and then your thumb alone on four to end it. Six, four, hammer the third, compound movement six again, second string, fourth. You get it? And then the next measure, 17, 18, 19, 20, same chord, but he pinches six and two at the beginning. Four, three, six, two. So it's a pinch, six and two, four, three, six, two, four. And again, it's always that bouncing thumb, 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 and thumb, and thumb. Whew. Measure 21, we're moving that F sharp minor down to the floor to get a B minor. So when we pick that B minor, it is five, four, two. Or sorry, five, four, three. My fault, pointer finger first. Five, four, three, five, two, four. <laughs> I think, let me look. Thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, yeah. Five, four, three, five, two, four. And then he pinches five and one to get that nice ring. He holds that and then he just plays an open A, transitioning into the kind of the second half of the bridge here. Let's recap from 17 really quick here before moving on. Two, three, four. To the F sharp. B minor. Let's do measure 23 and 24, and those two measures loop three times as he's singing out of the bridge here. So we start on a G chord. Just six, four, and, and that ends on the third string. And we're gonna hammer into that open. So we have six, four, three is all open. But then I'm hammering into this um, D chord with the F sharp in the bass. So you're gonna hear a hammer on from the third string, but at the same time I'm hammering on, I'm also doing that compound motion again where I'm hitting the sixth string with my thumb. So the hammer on is not picked again, but the thumb is picked again. So make sure you can get that nice and strong. And I'm hammering this ring finger on. You're hardly gonna hear it, but it is in there. I'm just hammering into the whole chord. 
So six, four, three, hammer on with the thumb at the same time. Then immediately hitting the second string of that D chord. And then the thumbs alone on the fourth string. I think you guys got it. And then from there he goes to the A chord with the E in the bass, six, and uh, six, two, four. That's all it is, thumb, middle, thumb, and then right back to that D with the F sharp in the bass. He's pinching six and two, and then hitting the thumb alone. And that happens three times. So you got the funny G that does the hammer on, to the A, to the D. And then it just repeats again. Oops, sorry, that one's it. hard to remember the the rhythm grape apple apple grape apple grape grape <laughs> just as a way to get those like when there's an eighth note and when there isn't in your head it would be grape apple apple grape apple grape 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 apple apple grape apple grape grape Whew. measure 29 almost done here little ending to the bridge, very simple. We are just playing that G shape again, just uh, playing six and then brushing two and three, with that third fret on the B string. Seeing that shape, he holds it. Then we go to the D with the F sharp in the bass, same thing, I'm hitting two and three and six at the same time. Then here it's a little different because I'm hearing that A chord, but I'm still hearing that third fret. So it's open on the sixth string and I'm still brushing two and three. So it's the A chord, but he's still holding that D in there, as opposed to just doing the second fret ones. That's how I'm hearing it. So we have the G, the D7, go to the A, but keep that ring finger there. And then we go right back into the intro part. The only difference is he does a quick little... So instead of just going to three, he does two, three, and we're back to that part. Which is measure one again. And guys, we did it. That is it. At the very bottom of the tab, there's one other little part that he's putting in there, which we'll talk about in a moment. But congratulate yourself. You guys have just done 99.9% .9 of the song. Whew. Now that you bathed yourself in that glory, let's, let's add these two little tricky parts. But I hope you enjoyed that moment of congratulations before these two little extra things are gonna annoy you. So jump to your tab. 32 is the same as measure one, 33 is the same. So we're gonna jump to 34 and check out this cool little part. It's that same idea of the A chord, but we have really, instead of doing just that seven, he's stretching all the way up to the fifth fret and even the seventh. So you gotta get comfortable with a big stretch. Thankfully, that's why he is capoed so high, so he can grab these other colors. And let's talk about it. It is six, four, actually looks like the 12th fret. And then I'm going back to the thumb on the sixth string and brushing the top two again, but now my pinky is stretched ah, all the way to measure, all the way to fret 14. Seven in the tab, right? But it looks like 14 on the guitar neck. So thumb, thumb, and thumb, and with that big stretch. Six, four, brush, six, brush, way up on seven. And here we get a breather. We're gonna lift up the chord to get the fourth string open and go to the D shape and hit two and three. So he's, get, he's just lifting his hand to go to a D chord there. Think about it that way. Right, he's anticipating the next measure, which is the D chord, but he's just going to it a hair early, which gives it this kind of like rhythmically off sensation. Six, four, brush, six, brush the higher one, open on the fourth, brush a D chord. We have some repeats there, and then measure eight, measure 38 is particularly goofy. It's the same idea, but the rhythm is staggered, and it's even more confusing to play. So let's take it from 32 so you get the context. Three, 
four. So it's only that one measure there that's different, which is the goofy one I just told you, which was uh, 34. And then we repeat that, so we'll take it from 36 here. Three, four, same idea, pinch. And then this material is new here in 38. It's the same idea, but different rhythm. So we have that A chord, thumb, thumb, and, but that and, he's just hitting two and three. So not that crazy melody yet. Then thumb back to six, and then he goes up to the fifth fret. Thumb on four, then he hits the seventh fret. And he's jumping to a D chord. You might miss getting that thumb there in time. Try your best. So really slow, 38, three, four. I can never get there in time. Let's do it really slow again, three, four, thumb, thumb, and thumb, and thumb, and. And then it ends the same. So it's really tricky, go slow. I don't have too much to say. <laughs> Except that it's tricky and go slow and your thumb might not make it back there in time. That's okay if it ends up being like a, like you're hammering into it. It's fast enough where that's totally acceptable. Don't worry about it too much. And it's only one part of the song where he does that. So if it's too tricky, just drop that whole part out. Um, but if you can get it, go slow and get it. And you did it. Yeah! Slow run through from the top. Have your tab PDF downloaded for free at Mike's Music Method. And here we go. One, two, three, four. So keep going to measure 32, 3, 4. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the intro. Yeah.